Hey, what are y'all doing? Come on over here and check this video out. It's going to be a pretty cool one. Old Goat says so. Since opening its doors in 1992, Space Center Houston has welcomed more than 22 million folks. NASA hosts nearly 1.25 million visitors to Texas annually to explore this 250,000 square foot facility. Space Center Houston is a science museum which serves as the official visitor center of NASA, Johnson Space Center here in Houston. It officially earned its place in the Smithsonian Museum back in 2014. Now what you're looking at now is Independence Plaza. It's the world's only replica space shuttle and it sits mounted on top of one of two of the original space shuttle carrier aircraft. We're going to go inside and we're going to check it out in just a bit. Houston was considered home for one of the retired space shuttle orbiters, but the Kennedy Space Center, Intrepid Space Museum, and California Science Center were chosen instead. But Independence is still pretty cool in its own right. Now let's go inside and check out some more exhibits. The exhibit Mission to Mars opened back in January of 2017. It was developed with the help of NASA and it focuses on the work NASA is doing now to plan for the future travel to Mars. Mission Mars teaches visitors about the planet through a variety of activities. Hanging in the gallery is the LIM or Apollo Lunar Module. It was a lunar lander spacecraft that was flown between lunar orbit and the moon's surface during the Apollo program. It was the first crewed spacecraft to operate exclusively in the airless vacuum of space and remains the only crewed vehicle to land anywhere beyond the Earth's surface. You can arm it okay, I'm gonna get the pro. 99, proceeded, three, two, one, ignition. Right away, Houston, that's your good. Apollo 17 broke several records for crewed spaceflight. It was the longest crewed lunar landing mission and holds the record for the greatest distance from a spacecraft during an extravehicular activity. It also is known for the largest lunar sample return, the longest time in lunar orbit, and the most lunar orbits. The ascent stage of the lunar module impacted the moon back in December of 1972. The descent stage remains on the moon's landing site. Eugene Cernan's flown Apollo 17 spacesuit is on display at the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum. Harrison Schmitz is in storage. His suit is in the best condition of all the flown Apollo lunar spacesuits and therefore is not on public display. This is a space exploration vehicle mock-up. The prototype is designed to support astronauts for up to two weeks in a low gravity environment. Its robot arms enable the crew to handle satellites and its suit ports to help astronauts suit up and exit the vehicle 
and a solar array powers the vehicle. This particular prototype is a concept vehicle and it's modular. It includes a cabin that can be mounted on a variety of different mobility platforms. This prototype was tested by engineers on a floor that kind of acts like a hockey table. The air bearing floor kind of lets the frictionless motion, you know, simulate that low gravity that the astronauts need. Once we're in space, a safe vehicle for exploration, it's going to increase the productivity and it's going to propel us forward in achieving the mission objectives. There's a heck of a lot to take in here at Houston Space Center. You notice the model just above the shoulder of the floating astronaut. Well, that's the International Space Station. Pretty impressive, huh? This is a model of the SLS. NASA's space launch system. It'll be the most powerful rocket ever built when it's completed. It'll let astronauts explore destinations far into the solar system. And the best part is, it's supposed to return man to the moon real soon. These huge rocket engines, RS-25, these rocket engines were from the space shuttle. They flew 135 missions and there's 16 of these big engines just waiting to support the first four SLS missions.
Skylab was the first United States space station. It was launched by NASA and occupied for 24 weeks. May 1973 to February 1974, it was occupied by three separate astronaut crews, Skylab 2, Skylab 3, and Skylab 4. Major operations included the orbital workshop, a solar observatory, Earth observation, and thousands of other experiments. Unable to be reboosted by the space shuttle, which wasn't ready to be launched until 1981, Skylab's orbit decayed, and it disintegrated in the atmosphere, sadly, on July 11, 1979, scattering debris across the Indian Ocean and Western Australia. Between 1969 and 1972, six Apollo missions brought back 382 kilograms or 842 pounds of lunar rock, core samples, pebbles, sand, and dust from the lunar surface. The six space flights returned 2,200 separate samples from six different exploration sites But we're going to close out this first part of our adventure right here. And we hope you stay tuned because there is much more to come in our next video from the Houston Space Center. We're going to visit Rocket Park where the Redstone and Little Joe rockets are on display. And of course we're going to stand in awe of the giant Saturn V as it lays on its side inside its hangar. So like always, as the old goat saying, we sure have appreciated spending time with you. Y'all come on back, and uh, we'll see y'all next time. Y'all take care now. The old goat said so.